The Congress, or Le Congress if you're fancy, is a French film that feels like a mixture between Holy Motors and a little bit of being John Malkovich because it's a fictional story, but it stars the real life Robin Wright. Now what happens to her character is that these producers come up to her and they feel that she hasn't done anything since The Princess Bride or when she was Jenny and Forrest Gump since I guess in this universe House of Cards doesn't exist. But what they offer her is that if she signs this contract, they pretty much take her soul in a sense, like her acting emotions and all this stuff. They're able to keep it in a sort of motion capture embodiment in which she never has to deal with, you know, dealing with other actors, doing all this press stuff. She can vacate with her family all she wants as long as they have this motion capture embodiment of her, which they can use in movies long after she's gone, and especially the ones that she never wanted to be in. And it seems like a pretty cool idea, again, the biggest con being that you're practically selling your soul, though. Now, as the movie starts, it does feel a little bit slow, and it does take its time, but for the most part, I thought it was pretty intriguing, especially that first quarter sort of third and where they're explaining what this thing is and they show you a little bit of uh, an example of how they use it for another actress and that it's really cool and it's really advanced but at the same time does have its glitches but I wondered hey it's cool that these companies especially since these companies are a mixture of two other ones which they're making fun of is able to have this power to be able to do this thing and I wondered what else are they using this out in the world and I was really excited to see where the movie was going to take it and they had me but then at around the 40 minute mark it takes this turn which I wouldn't really call it a twist because one I mean, and we can talk about it because it's a review but two they practically tell you what it is in the trailer and that's that at the 40 minute mark it turns into an animation and this is the part where the movie has this sort of specific tone that it's carrying and then all of a sudden it literally I've never seen a movie take a, a bigger turn as this just goes completely in another place to the point that the animation it's not your regular Disney Pixar animation if that's what you're hoping for but it's this weird thing in where the character of uh, Robin Wright herself says you know what it's sort of like the animator was an acid and I'm not Steve Jobs here I'm not condoning it but I'm saying this is one of those movies that if you're on acid, it probably gets better at that point. The thing is, though, is that that's where the movie ends up staying for a majority of the time, which, yes, in a sense, that storyline isn't just animation just to be animation. There's a specific point to it. That animation is what's supposed to be the Congress, and they're explaining a little bit, and it's supposed to go back and coincide with this whole idea of the aspect that was in the beginning of the movie. But at the same time, while she's in this world, she interacts with other characters. For one, you have John Hamm as an actual animation, who, for me, looked a little bit like Adrian Brody. But you also have Harvey Keitel playing the big producer as well as Paul Giamatti coming in as I believe he was sort of like a doctor slash therapist but the biggest thing being the animation which I'll give it that it is very out there but at the same time is like very stylized and it's one of the things that's obviously going to set this movie apart but the thing is you definitely need to get into it and the thing is is that since it stays a majority of the movie and you're not super invested into it because it's definitely all over the place again it's like you were on acid or something like that but there's like Michael Jackson there's like Jesus Christ there's all of these like Marilyn Monroe all of these different things going on that at a certain point even though it is stylized and you can enjoy it for me personally it got a little bit tiring because not so much that it's different but because it got to a point where you didn't really understand what was going on or what was the purpose of it it's sort of like the artist was the only one who really understood why he was making all these things as zany as they were also this is one of those films that if you think that there's subliminal you know symbols and everything you are definitely going to see a little bit of Illuminati signs all over the place but definitely the best way to describe this movie is if we get into the spoilers so if you haven't seen this movie I'm about to get into the spoilers, so definitely go watch it if you were curious about it as we get into it in 3, 2, 1. Now for me, one of the main problems that I had with this movie was the fact that I really enjoyed that whole aspect of what they were talking about and the fact that the director of this movie, who also did Waltz with Bashir, really had a passion for doing this film and you can tell that everybody involved had this whole, you know, idea that they wanted to make a film that pretty much talks bad about Hollywood. Not so much talks bad about Hollywood, but is pretty much telling you, hey, you know what, Hollywood, we understand all of these things that you try to put upon us. So this is sort of like getting back at them. The thing is, though, I believe that it's an artsy film trying to get back, and at a certain point, especially with the animation, it becomes too artsy. The story element, though, is that while I feel they could have focused so much on that aspect, again, them trying to exploit Hollywood, is that they spend so much time on Robin Wright's character and her perspective of how she's dealing with this, when her main thing is just her child. Like, that's really all she cares about, which is all fine and dandy, but you got this storyline which is so much more interesting than hers. On top of that, there's the whole animation world, which I understood a bit at at the same time, I think this whole idea that they were really focusing on this whole theme could have been told better than having this whole thing where, again, it feels like the animator was a, was really the only person who knew why all of this stuff was there. Also, the movie has this one point where it has the craziest animation sex scene that I've ever seen, which, 
I don't watch too many, but that's why this one this one was just completely weird. But the thing is, really getting into it, is that at a certain point you see it's not so much, I guess, a twist, but you really see that this whole animated world is really just this sort of like medication, intoxication that people take to be able to see things this way, which reminded me of a comic book called Skin. And the thing that this comic book covers is that in this world you're able to put on these contacts and be able to see things the way you want them to be seen. If you want it to look like a Western or a sci-fi, it looks that way. But at the same time, what this comic book covers is the fact that if it's physically there, it's still physically there. Like, if there's a chair, you can put on the contacts and make it be a throne if you like Game of Thrones. It can be a bar stool if you want to be a cowboy. But the thing is, the chair is still there. If you're going to travel somewhere, your car can be a chariot or it can be a spaceship, but the car is still there and that's the only way you can travel. The thing about this movie is that you see that she was in, like, this world where they were pretty much, like, all meth heads all over the place, but that everybody is seeing it the way they want to, but the thing is that, how does that still translate into the real world? That was supposed to be the semi-twist, but the thing is, these people are like flying places, but how do you explain that? Like, how are the physics explained to the way you're seeing it animated to the way that it's actually happening in real life. Also, when you get that reveal that everyone around her is poor and they're really just like homeless, how is it that they can afford this lifestyle? I mean, I guess, you know, they can afford the drugs, but at the same time, they're like out partying, how are they living, how are they even getting the money to afford it, how are they eating, again, the physical of, you can see an animation, you know, an animated like food and fountains and all that stuff, but where is that really coming from when you're like living off of a dumpster alleyway? But in all honesty, I think that the movie definitely had these premises that were really interesting, but I think falls back on itself and where it's trying to exploit Hollywood and the fact that it has a female character who, uh, they have that persona of her that she never wanted to become because she never wanted to be in a sci-fi, when this is technically a sort of sci-fi, but it was that character that seemed a lot like um, the Emily Blunt's character in well, I don't know, they changed the name so many times for this movie. But I did enjoy that whole persona of the animator wanting to control everything and that having be there and then you wanting to break out of that. But other than that, I think it's a very interesting film and one definitely worth checking out if you wanted to see something completely different because that's definitely the best experience of this movie. Definitely let me know if you liked it, what your interpretation was of the animation. We can talk about it down below. If you didn't like it, we can also talk about it down below and we can, you know, just discuss where or what the craziest part of the animation was. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and until next time, I'll see you guys later.